Thank you both for your time this Sunday afternoon. Uh, Brent, I'm going to start with you, um, and I want to find out what is the core of your traditional business? What does uh, printing, a 3D printing SA usually do? Thanks, uh, thanks, Anneli. I think uh, what's important to mention is it is a community-run organization. And when I say it's a company, or when you say it's a company, it's actually not a company. It's a collective of about 500 uh, 3D printers around uh, the country. And we are setting up one of the largest printing farms here in South Africa, and that's all via the Internet and a server called Discord. Um, oddly enough, the, um, the whole initiative was started last Friday. It started with 10 of us, and we are now up to 500 people that have joined our, joined our drive. That's an incredible collective. So have you had to adapt any technologies or communication systems in order to coordinate such an intricate process? Well, I think we're very lucky um, being able to use technology uh, these days, and specifically now during this, this crisis. I think a lot of people are turning towards video calling and messaging. Mm -hmm. We've used a platform called Discord. Uh, we said we've set up an entire server with communication channels, uh, making the files available to our 3D printers, connecting doctors, healthcare workers to our logistics team. And slowly but surely, we're actually developing a, quite, a, quite an uh, intrinsic uh, team that's dealing with all these, these queries and, and distribution channels. Right, and coming back to you in a second, when we talk about uh, distribution, I'm going to bring in uh, Iva Rimmer. Uh, Iva, have the uh, SAPS um, been supportive and bought into the distribution process? That must be logistically quite challenging, and obviously you need the right kind of permits uh, to be able to get to the people you need to give these face shields to. Uh, very much so, Anli. Uh, we like to do things right. Uh, we do have permits for our vehicles. We are an essential service, and we did get all the right permits to be able to do this because the collecting process was, was quite widespread. It was from mm -hmm. north of Pretoria down as far as Mayerton and East Strand, West Strand, and Johannesburg, of course. So th that's been your focus at the moment is, is solely on Gauteng, and will that spread uh, later in time? Uh, we haven't been asked to spread it yet, but if we do, we do have teams in four other provinces, so we will be able to assist to get that equipment collected. And so who are these uh, face shields being distributed to? I'm presuming that it's uh, essential and healthcare workers to start off with and not communities. Okay, that's a question you need to fire at Brent. We are collecting them. What's happening, people have got these 3D printers at home, they are doing the printing, but they obviously can't deliver them anywhere because of the lockdown. Yes. So we've had to go to individuals' homes and collect them in batches of 10, 20, 30, 40 as they're churning them out and then bring them back to a central point that we can hand them over to Brent and his team for the actual distribution to the healthcare workers. Great, Brent. So pick up there from Ivor and tell us how you're getting uh, these masks uh, to the right people and who those people are. Thanks. Thanks, Ivan. Thanks, Anneli. Um, I think what's important to note is these are distributed for free. Um, we have seen a lot of um, sort of people taking a bit of advantage and starting to sell these. We distribute our, our printed items for absolutely for free and we are a volunteer organization. But just to put a bit of light onto um, who's receiving these, at the moment it is mainly our government hospitals, our COVID-19 our COVID task forces and our EMS uh, frontline medical staff. There's obviously a huge request at the moment for, for various uh, medical prof professionals from dentists mm -hmm. to anyone that's dealing with, uh, with the public. Um, so yeah, if we can just, we just ask people to just be a bit patient. We're trying to get the first batches out to, to the frontline workers, which will be what I've just mentioned now, the groups of people. Absolutely. Uh, how many masks have you already made and distributed and what is your goal uh, over the next coming weeks? And it was quite, it was quite staggering um, starting last Friday. Um, we managed to print 5,000 uh, face shields over four days. And the past couple of days now, I've just been getting those out to the correct people. Um, in terms of goals um, goals and sort of giving our, our community what, what we need to do, at the moment, we're just dealing with requests and trying to get those into a database. And then we're actually just building stock stock at the moment and trying to um, put uh, put yeah, put people in touch with the, the right areas. Mm. And Iva just mentioned in terms of regional, at the moment, we're just housing based. We've just been focusing on the hotspot itself. But I'd like to make a call out to anyone in, in the other regions that would like to join our movement and just give us a little bit um, of assistance in terms of logistics. There are plans to set up um, collection bins, either at uh, shopping retailers or um, petrol stations, 
And yeah, we're just looking for, we're basically reaching out to the public here to, to get in touch with us if there's anyone that can assist us with the distribution mm. drive. That's incredible. Ivor, you have a, a unique challenge in the sense that you say you're collecting these uh, masks from people in their homes. They have 3D printers. They're assisting uh, this collective in printing. Have you faced any specific type of challenges in your collection drive, either you know, with um, you know, getting them directly from people, people wanting to avoid direct contact? How do you navigate those challenges? Uh, we, we prepared the people that we were collecting there. We had over 295 points to collect from yesterday. Uh, each one of those then gets a, a WhatsApp message saying, this is who we are, we come in to collect, you put them in the bag, you sanitize your bag, you come to the gate, put it down, step back, we'll collect it. So we, we followed the social distances protocols. We've made sure that it, it's the health is okay for everybody. And uh, it was a very pleasant experience to get around, as I say, 295 collection points yesterday and over 4,000 headbands brought in yesterday. Fantastic. Brent, last question for you quickly. Uh, anyone who has a 3D printer at home and might not be part of the initiative yet, can they join in how and where? With, with pleasure, absolute pleasure. We'll be setting up all our communication channels at the moment. Um, everyone needs to know we have been running for about a week and we're all very new to this. Um, <laughs> to the, to this. Um, but our, our, current, uh, our current sort of handle or, or way you can contact is EPSA. That's um, sorry, 3DPSA, 3D Printers South Africa, .org .za. We also have a Facebook, we have a Twitter, all using those same, that same um, acronym, 3DPSA, 3D Printers SA. Right, so just to recap, that was 3DPSA.org.za. Correct, Fantastic. Yes. Thank you very much. Pleasure speaking to you. Uh, we've been speaking to Brent you, Alexander from 3D Printing SA and Ivor Rimmer, he's the National Coordinator of Road Rescue Unit.